This video was made in association with African Custom Knives. ACK is the leading US-based purveyor of South African handmade cutlery. Head over to AfricanCustomKnives.com for exclusive deals on rare custom knives. What is up everybody and welcome. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at this three-leg dog knife. Now I cannot find a model name for this knife. Uh, it wasn't sent along with the invoice that came with all of these knives. Um, and so it's just a knife from Three Leg Dog. Now that is the brand name and the maker behind the name is going to be Ryan or Rian uh, Manser. Monster. I'm not sure about the pronunciation. This is a South African custom from a part-time maker, and it does come to us on loan directly from the lovely African Custom Knives, and this knife is supplied to us directly from Nathan's personal collection. Now, Nathan told me a little bit about his first interaction with Ryan, uh, which happened, I believe, at the South African Guildmaker Show, uh, and I don't know if that was like this year or last year, but... Um, he ended up getting an opportunity to try this particular knife and fell in love with it so much uh, that he bought it straight off Ryan at the show and then since then has actually been a purveyor for Ryan's knives in the U.S. Um, so if you want a knife from Three Leg Dog, you can get it straight from African Custom Knives. Um, so go check out their website and see what they have available. There's lots of cool – he does a lot of cool stuff with G10, lots of interesting colors, tans, blacks, oranges, greens, um, and all that kind of stuff. So – He's got some pretty interesting designs. This one is going to be a little bit older, and of course you can see that it does have the Emerson Wave, which is kind of illegal to sell in the U.S., so I believe you can still buy one of these from ACK, but uh, generally I don't think these are going to be coming with the Wave in the future, um, at least unless he license it, licenses the technology from Emerson. Um, but so let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's first take a look at the specs so that you guys can get an idea uh, of what we're working with here. It is a pretty large knife. So if we take out the PM2, you'll able you'll be able to see that it actually dwarfs the PM2 in terms of length. I'm not going to include the little lanyard hole here on the backspacer or anything. But um, and then of course a rat two is completely dwarfed by the three leg dog. As you can see, it is a rather large knife, and we are actually working with a pretty thick blade stock as well. Um, it's not absurdly thick, but it's definitely going to be thicker than something that you get on like a PM2. Um, additionally, you know, overall the knife is pretty big. So while you have this thicker blade stock, you also have a thick frame, uh, and it's really going to, you know, fill any hand. It's pretty large as a knife. Let's go ahead and also check out the weight of this knife, because I haven't done that yet, and I'm pretty interested. All right, so this knife is a full G10 construction with a tab lock. Uh, let me make sure that I'm not lying to you. It looks like a tab lock. I think this presentation side's full G10, and this looks like a tab lock where um, maybe the tab extends under the uh, backspacer here for a little added structure. Um, it does look like sort of uh, in a full frame on this side or full liner uh, fully set into the G10 just like it is on the Glimpse 7.0. But this front side, this presentation side does appear to be exclusively G10. So let's see how a, such a large knife with uh, this thicker blade stock does with just this mostly G10 construction. So you can see at 4.76 ounces, it's actually a really, really great EDC weight, um, 4.8 ounces, especially for the size. Um, it's a pretty big knife, and so I think that's a perfectly reasonable carry weight for a knife that's this large. So let's go ahead and jump into the features and flaws. I think the fit and finish on this knife is pretty strong. It's not perfect, um, but he's got pretty good tolerances. There isn't too much space in here for the bearings. Um, you know, everything kind of fits together very well. The knife is perfectly centered. Um, so pretty strong fit and finish actually. The G10 has a good finish to it. It's not the best finish I felt um, in terms of G10, but it's pretty smooth. He has a lot of sort of contouring going on around the handle here and everything like that. So there's definitely attention to detail that I can really get behind. Even up on this like Emerson Wave uh, you know, sort of section here, you can see a 45 degree angle chamfer and everything. So um, definitely an attention to detail, good fit and finish. I can definitely appreciate that. Now, the design is obviously subjective, but uh, there are design elements that are 
objectively poor on this knife. One is sort of everything is kind of at this 90 degree angle. This is a complaint that you guys have seen reflected in almost all of my uh, reviews of part-time South African makers. They're just not rounding out their edges enough for me. Um, and I really don't like spending a bunch of money on what ends up having sharp edges. Now, it's not so much a flaw up here on the blade spine. He did kind of round this off just ever so slightly. Um, and it's not like a super big issue with the frame either, just because G10 is particularly soft to begin with. But you can really feel it up and around this flipper tab and everything like that. Uh, and sort of just like in this tang area feels kind of unfinished in general. And I don't particularly like the extra thick blade stock. I don't think it was necessary on this knife. Um, and I honestly think that with this really large flat here and this uh, short flat grind that it's not going to make the best slicer. Um, this is one of the last knives I would pull out if I was looking to cut through an apple or a tomato or something. Um, it's more maybe what I would want to have along like on a camping trip so that I could shave some wood or something like that. But moving forward, the detent for this knife is only valid for the wave, not for the flipper tab. I would say this is my biggest complaint about the knife. Um, the detent is extraordinarily light. Like, I mean, really, 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 really light. Like, I should not, I mean, I'm really, this is like minimal effort to, to shake the knife into deployment. Minimal, like I... <sighs> You guys get the point. It is a light freaking detent. And what that means with this particularly not well positioned uh, flipper tab either, you can see geometrically um, it sort of sits really far below the pivot, which doesn't give you a uh, very good leverage, um, especially in the light switch motion. So you can see here that in a vertical position, the knife basically doesn't even like want to try to deploy. I mean, it doesn't even get halfway. Uh, you're basically just nudging it out of the detent position. Um, and then push button, it's still like, that's not full lockup. You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm like, there you go. You can just barely get deployment with the most uh, attentive and, and strained push button action. So really you have to flick it. You have to wrist flick this knife if you're going to be using the flipper tab. Um, there's no two ways about it. And that's another issue that I have with sort of the weight of the blade. Um, you know, if you want to do a light detent, that's fine. But I get much better deployment out of a Todd bag, which has a um, sort of larger overall profile and a blade thickness that's pretty much comparable to this, maybe slightly thinner. Um, and that has a super light detent as well. And it deploys a lot better than this. So I have to say, as far as the flipper tab goes here, it is a complete fail. I need to stress that this knife was procured kind of on the spot by Nathan. And I have seen videos of other three leg dog knives that are in uh, stocked in inventory at African custom knives where the detent clearly looks more well tuned. These are knives that don't have the Emerson, um, the wave function. And so you can tell in those videos that, that the knife deploys very well. Um, and so I don't think that this is a concern in general on his builds. I think maybe he went for the extra light detent for the better functionality with the wave um, function. And so that's why you have this sacrifice for the flipper tab. If you're gonna do that though, just give me like a thumb stub or just do it the wave only, you know what I mean? I guess I, you have to have the flipper tab if you don't have a stud, but um, that was just kind of a bummer that I couldn't really use this as a flipper. Having said that, this knife functions incredibly well using the, the wave functionality, and so I'm going to cut to a clip of me showing that to you real quick now. Okay, so now that you guys have seen how well the Emerson uh, wave function works, we can move on to the fact that this clip is made actually out of G10. I've had a few people say, look at that carbon fiber clip, but that's not what it is. You can see it does not make contact with the frame. It has um, not the best hookup here. And so the only thing that makes this clip successful is how large it is. Um, it makes it so that it doesn't really fall out of your pocket just out of the sheer size. But um, the tension, not great. The G10, I feel like I'm going to break it. It feels very snappable. Um, and so I don't know. There, I think there's a reason that G10 clips haven't really caught on. And this is a good example why. It functions well. I like putting it in it you know, putting it in the pocket. Um, it makes it, because it doesn't have too much tension, it works very well using the uh, wave functionality. 
So I can kind of see that. But uh, overall, the G10 clip didn't really work out for me as far as I'm concerned. Um, another weird thing that I see on his knives is that he uses the same shape screws as the pivot. It's like they're pivot screws are all of his regular screws. Now, this threw me off a lot more when I was first looking at the knife. They've kind of grown on me. Um, at least they're Torx, but uh, I just, because they don't all line up and stuff, it just looks a little funky. I I don't know if I want hardware this big all over the knife or if I want, you know, my, my regular screws to kind of like match the pivot. It's kind of a weird design aesthetic. You can decide whether or not for yourself you like that. Um, it didn't work out for me as much. Um, another complaint that I have about this knife is that there's a little bit of lock stick, a little bit of lock grind, um, but that is only sometimes, and I th really think that has to do with my humidity issue. When I first got the knife, it didn't have any lock stick, and actually right now on camera, there's very, very little, um, but there were a few days where it was kind of humid out, and the, the lock bar got very grindy up against the tang and just really made it uncomfortable and gross to disengage, um, but I wrote that in my notes to talk to you guys, and now that I'm actually disengaging the knife on camera, it's not really an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and chalk that up to an issue of my environment and not an issue uh, with the actual maker making the knife. Um, but so that's pretty much going to do it, guys. It's got really good ergonomics. I do like the jimping up here. It doesn't hurt too much, uh, but you can also bear down on it. Like I said, the MS the wave functionality works very well. You can get up into this finger choil, but he's done nothing to relieve the sharpness of this edge. So be careful. Like I just stabbed myself a little bit while I said be careful. Um, it's very sharp in here. So I would very sparsely or very carefully use this um uh, finger choil because you could easily slip forward and slice open your finger. No problemo. Um, and of course the G10 backspacer looks great. I'm not, well, I say I'm not a lanyard guy, but I actually have quite a few lanyards in the collection now. Um, I don't really like it when, you know, the lanyard hole is like this obtrusive, but whatever to each their own. Um, I don't think that all of his designs necessarily have that, although a lot of them do. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting being able to check out this knife. Um, you know, on behalf of African custom knives, it's, it's, really enjoyable to introduce uh, new makers and part-time makers to the community. I think you guys should definitely go check out his knives. There was one in particular that I saw released recently that uh, even though I had kind of more negative opinions about this particular exact knife than I do positive, um, you can tell that the makers really got his, his excuse my language, shit together. Um, and I think that he's going to improve hand over fist uh, over the coming years and there are a couple knives that I've seen released recently that like really looked up to the quality where I like kind of wanted to buy them um, so I do not doubt that you'll see a three leg dog in my knife collection at some point I definitely think you should check them out uh, check him out as a maker um, this one in particular with the with the thick blade stock and everything just didn't quite work out for me but if you get one without the wave uh, where he's kind of tuned the detent a little bit better uh, I think you're gonna get a really great I didn't mention before either that it drops shut like a champ now obviously there's that heavy blade but it's super smooth and that's something that I really need to talk about I meant to mention that when I spoke about the fit and finish earlier but this this knife is super wicked, incredibly smooth. So if you get a detent that's tuned a little bit better, what you're going to have is like a really genuine, solid South African flipper. So definitely check him out, guys. His prices are still reasonable. So if you want to get in, get in now. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see beautiful pictures of all these knives, you can, of course, follow me on Instagram at TavarishWorks. And if you'd like to reach out to me for any reason, you can hit me up at TavarishWorks at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.